everyone, welcome to Christina Cakes It. I'm Christina and today I'm showing you how to make a hanging canvas painted cake. In general, I like anything that is very unique and pretty much one of a kind. And that includes anything when it comes to cakes. And I did come across one other person who has made this type of cake before. So this idea is not my original idea. Sugar Cake School is like the inventor of this technique. And when I saw that she basically had made a cake that it looked like a piece of art just hanging on the wall and it was like an optical illusion. You could like cut into it and you could see it wasn't a cake. I was just so intrigued by this and I knew that I wanted to come up with my own version for the channel and my version is a little bit different than the version that I originally saw and I actually think the way I'm going to show you guys is a little bit easier. So the trick to what I'm going to be doing to make my cake hang starts with a shadow box and this came to me this idea came to me because shadow boxes have obviously some like depth to them because you can place objects and so my thought was this is perfect because it can hang on the wall and if I take the glass off the cake will just sit in there perfectly so the shadow box I'm using is an 8 by 10 size you can obviously use whatever size that you want and it took a little bit of like engineering to kind of figure out exactly how this was going to work but basically i'm going to end up taking this apart and i'll show you guys how um, it all comes together but the key is you do need to cut a cake board to the size that's going to fit exactly inside of our shadow box and obviously support our cake so to figure out the size of the cake board basically you're going to take your shadow box apart this is a little awkward because my cake is in the way below. And you're going to find there's like this little insert in here. So if you try to make your cake the size of the glass, it's going to be too big. And we're actually not going to be using the glass, so I'm just going to set this aside. So the size of the cake board that you actually need is the size of this insert. So I basically traced it around on cardboard and I cut out a cake board that is the size of the insert. So from here, I'm going to cut my cake into exactly the same size. And I used a 12 by 12 square pan. You don't have to use that size. You could even, if you have like smaller cake pans, you can like put the cake together because it's gonna be covered, nobody's gonna know. I just had a 12 by 12 pan because I have like millions of cake pan sizes. So I'm just going to cut around this. And my cake did break apart a little bit because it was a large cake pan size, it's like, more prone to breaking, but I'm not worried because I'm just gonna cover it up. And the other thing that I did was off camera, I did measure the depth of like basically how much room I'm gonna have. And I wanted that and just to make sure that my cake was flat enough um, so that like it, when it sits in here, it looks, you know, like even, like it's supposed to look like a painting. So that has been measured, depending on, like on if your cake domes or something like that, you're, you may have to level your cake so that it fits nicely into your shadow box. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some frosting onto my cake board. This is also going to help the cake stick you know, because it is going to be vertical. So it's like a little buttercream glue here. I am a little bit nervous for this next part because the cake did break. So I wanna get this onto my cake board without it cracking. Yay, success. And I'm just testing to make sure that's gonna fit in there. And yay again, that is perfect size. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited right now. So before I get to the fun part of making my abstract painting with buttercream, I'm gonna give this just a layer of 
just like white buttercream just as a base. And then I'm gonna pop this into the fridge because I do wanna crumb coat it. So if you guys watch my channel, you would know that I am a big fan of like palette knife painting or like the textured buttercream that looks like abstract modern art. And to do that, you do need a base layer of like crumb coat so that it doesn't smear. So I'm just giving this my boring base layer for now. For me, this doesn't need to be super smooth because of the design I'm going for. It has like some texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the freezer for about 20 minutes. You put it into the fridge for 20 minutes. Um, freezer just works a little faster. So cake was in the freezer for about 20 minutes and this is nice and firm to the touch. So I'm ready to start painting this cake with buttercream. And I just have a bunch of various different shades. And to be honest, I just kept them in this saran wrap because I'm actually tired of washing bowls, so I didn't put them in little separate bowls like I usually do. And I always joke that if I ever could have an assistant just to wash all of my like baking dishes, I would get one. So the saran wrap is just simple and convenient for me. So I have just a bunch of different palette knife um, sizes, and I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to use. I'm just going to kind of see what I like. To be honest, I probably use the small offset spatula the most, so I'm just going to go ahead and get going and start adding some color. And I'm definitely going to be cleaning my palette knife in between different colors. Otherwise, you're going to get like too much of a color smear that is not a look I'm going for. And as I'm going, I'm just using a little bit of acetate to, to like smooth this down. I do want some texture definitely, but I don't want too much. And this is also gonna help me blend the colors. my first initial coat of my buttercream paint. I'm gonna put this into the freezer just for like five minutes because I want it to firm up. And I'm gonna go over it again with more buttercream frosting and I just don't want it to smear with my next layer. So my cake is out of the freezer and I'm just gonna go over this again with just some more color, just trying to get this exactly how I want it. So now that I'm happy with how my cake looks, I am gonna put it back into the freezer again, um, just to completely chill before like I move it to the shadow box. So it's finally time to put my cake into the shadow box, but before I do that, I do want to like basically wrap this little, I don't know what it's called, like the backing with some saran wrap because I'm probably gonna use the shadow box again and I don't wanna get cake all over this. So now I'm gonna put my shadow box back together minus the glass. And I'm just gonna actually put a little bit of buttercream onto this saran wrap. Just to add like a little more stickiness when it goes onto the wall. If you wanted to be like really safe, you could use royal icing. We're just gonna drop this in. I'm 
just gently pressing this in. I had to do a little cake surgery. No big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up these edges a little bit. you guys enjoyed this episode I had such a fun time making this cake and what I envision is like a party or something where you have these like all over the wall and people don't know that it's a cake and another really great thing about making a hanging cake is you can do whatever art you want on the cake and really the sky is the limit so I hope that you guys loved learning this and if you did like this episode don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel